Right, so check this out. I have a fan mounted inside of a duct here and a fog machine mounted behind it. And what I can do is I can blow air through the fan and we should get a stream of smoke uh, coming out of this nozzle. Now, I'll give you a quick demo. I should be able to deflect the air a bit with this piece of foam. So let's spin it up. Okay, so hopefully you could see the smoke getting deflected uh, by that piece of foam. Uh, but watch what happens when I used a curved surface and put it near to the stream of air. You should be able to visibly see the air being pulled downwards around the outside of the curve. And this is due to an effect called the Coanda effect. This video is sponsored by Wix. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash Tom Stanton to build your free website today. So what is the Coanda effect? When air or any other fluid exits a nozzle at high velocity, it will pull surrounding molecules with it as it disperses into the stationary surrounding air. But when a surface is placed near to the flow, the air between the surface and the fast flow is dragged along with it. This causes a low pressure zone between the fast moving air and the surface, and the surrounding atmospheric air above it will push down on the flow, attaching it to the curved surface. So you might be wondering, how am I going to use this Coanda effect to produce thrust and lift a drone off the ground? Well, if you search Coanda effect drone into Google, you'll see many results that look like flying saucers. And initially it seems as though there's a centre propeller that blows air directly downwards to produce lift. But in fact there is no hole through the centre of these flying saucer type drones. Instead the airflow from the propeller flows on the outside of the dome and follows the outside of the curve due to the Coanda effect. Now these things are pretty cool uh, but I don't really see much point in putting a bowl shaped dome uh, underneath a propeller. You may as well just have the air from the propeller flow directly downwards. So instead of using a propeller, I want to use an impeller, which will basically uh, blow air directly outwards, horizontally in a disc, and use the Coanda effect to then follow the outside of the curve of the dome. So let's 3D print some impellers. Since I have no idea what kind of impeller would be most suited for a propeller replacement, I printed many different types to test. Some couldn't handle the RPM of the motor, and some were too much for the motor to handle. I finally settled on this design as it was relatively close to the drone propeller in terms of current draw. The next step is to make the curved dome that will be mounted under the impeller to deflect the air downwards for lift. Now I'm going to 3D print the dome because it's the quickest and cheapest solution to me at this point in time. In order to make the 3D print as lightweight as possible, it will need to be hollow but it's almost impossible to print this on a regular FDM 3D printer due to the huge overhang in the centre. And even with support material, it will be very difficult to print with such a thin layer. So I've printed this test dome in two pieces and weighing in at 83 grams, plus the layer lines being perpendicular to the airflow, it wasn't ideal. So my next plan was to cut the dome into slices like a cake. That way I could 3D print the dome in eight pieces and attach that to a centre hub. This saved quite a bit of weight and I'm not sure it could be much lighter using a 3D printing technique. The next step was to mount the motor and impeller to the dome and see if the air really does get directed downwards due to the Coanda effect. And it looks surprisingly hopeful. Then I set up a thrust test stand with a conventional drone motor and propeller to get some control data. This setup produced 10.28 newtons of thrust while drawing 346 watts. I then replaced the propeller with the impeller and attached it to the dome. This produced 1.84 newtons of thrust whilst drawing 324 watts, which is extremely disappointing. But at least it looks awesome in slow motion.
So let's get on with the build. Repeating the dome construction another three more times wasn't very enjoyable with all the CA glue fumes. But at least I didn't choose to use lightweight carbon fibre tubes for the arms, which would require cutting and making carbon fibre dust. On top of that, I recycled the motors from a working drone to build this thing. Once the arms were attached to the domes and laid out like the quadcopter shape it was designed to be, it looked like a formation of Chinese lanterns. Or a few salad bowls. With the electronics installed and the motors soldered up, it was time to fit the impellers and see if this thing will fly. Okay, here we go. First test of the Coanda Effect drone. That kind of worked. <laughs> It needs full throttle to get off the ground, so I'm a bit worried about the motors overheating. One of the impellers is loose on the motor, so I'm going to uh, go and tighten that up, as well as let the motors cool down a little bit. That was a very short flight, but I have a feeling they're going to get quite warm because I was at full throttle just then, just to get it off the ground. So the drone does fly, but it's not great. The all up weight of the drone is 890 grams and it's only capable of producing about 750 grams of thrust. So it's only able to hover in ground effect at full throttle, which heats up the motors very quickly. I then decided to try different impeller designs with no luck, including this weird design which kept the motors cooler, but didn't increase the thrust at all. I then tried reducing the weight by flying it with the battery on an extension wire. But again, it still struggled to get out of ground effect. So I think those few test flights uh, went pretty well. Uh, it proves that you can use the Coanda effect to deflect a horizontal uh, airflow down vertically to produce lift to lift up a drone. However, it is incredibly inefficient. <laughs> um, no matter what I did to this thing, uh, it just wouldn't get out of ground effect. Um, even without the weight of the battery and all sorts of impeller designs, I've gone through, oh, I don't even know how many, impellers <laughs> so many different impellers there's still a pile over there um, different angled blades uh, different height uh, different diameters different number of blades no matter what i do um, it just doesn't have enough thrust so i think as a last ditch attempt to get this thing to uh, fly still using the coranda effect uh, but just getting rid of these impellers is I'm going to use conventional drone propellers. Uh, I'll need to raise the motors up a little bit and uh, put some kind of scoop to scoop the air from the propeller outwards and then hopefully it will still use the coanda effect to pull the air downwards by just using a slightly more efficient form of producing thrust. All the motors were desoldered and removed from their mounts and bolted to a 3D printed extension. Once reattached to the original motor mounts, they were raised slightly to allow the propeller airflow to flow out sideways. 
They were all then resoldered back up and ready for another test flight. Right, here we go. Last attempt with conventional propellers. Oh, it sounds so smooth. Oh, that's so much easier to fly. So there's a bump ground effect, and I'm only at about half throttle, so it's flying much better. <laughs> so it's still using the commander effect, but it flies miles better. It takes off at about half throttle. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'm pleased but also annoyed that my uh, impellers didn't work very well. <laughs> It may seem as though this is now just a regular drone, with a few large tomato things mounted below it. But it is in fact producing lift due to the coanda effect. The diameter of the domes are far larger than the propellers, and therefore the thrust can only flow around the curved surfaces. One thing I noticed after a couple of flights is the strong ground effect on the craft. A conventional drone experiences ground effect, but I've never flown a drone that floats around on such a cushion of air. It's able to fly out of ground effect, but requires quite a bit more power consumption, as well as getting buffeted around in the wind. Whilst I was doing research for this project, I read somewhere that apparently using the coanda effect to direct a drone's airflow downwards uh, to produce lift actually increases the efficiency of the drone, which after carrying out this project, I struggle to believe. However, the theory is that the fast moving air over the top of the dome is at lower pressure than the airflow or the stationary air underneath the dome. And this pushes up on the drone in a similar way that the difference in pressure uh, above and below an aircraft wing works. Now, this may be possible if you had a really efficient uh, propulsion system, like a really efficiently designed uh, impeller, and also possibly different size uh, domes. Uh, if you increase the diameter of the dome, uh, you will increase the surface area, which will make the effect of that pressure difference um, greater, so it will push up a bit more. Also, I assume you would have to compare it to a drone of a similar weight um, so that the weight of the domes are negligible because uh, if I were to take these domes off, the drone would be so much lighter. Even if I manufactured these using vacuum forming technique or carbon fibre or something like that, uh, the added mass would still uh, decrease the efficiency, I assume, of the, of the drone. Also, the flight characteristics in high winds or, or high speed uh, would probably be a nightmare with this thing. Um, it's not the most aerodynamic thing. I was really impressed with the uh, ground effect that um, this drone experienced. Uh, there's a really strong cushion of air that it floats on. And I'm, what I'm wondering about that is uh, whether the airflow that comes around the top of the dome with a conventional drone, as the airflow hits the ground, it spreads outwards. But with this, I wonder whether it, some of it goes underneath the dome and almost like pressurizes underneath. I'm not sure exactly how, uh, whether that does work, uh, but the cushion of air that it floats around on ground effect is really strong. It would be interesting to see if uh, this could be modified into almost like a ground effect uh, hovercraft, so a coanda effect, ground effect hovercraft, um, and also see whether that still requires uh, gyros for stabilization. Uh, as hovercrafts don't require active stabilization, they just 
sit on a cushion of air above the ground. So there we have it, a drone that uses the Coanda effect for propulsion. Um, it's a bit of a disappointment that these impellers didn't work uh, better than I thought they would. Um, I really wanted to get this thing to fly properly and then compare the efficiency to a conventional drone. Uh, however, halfway through the project I realised that there is just no way this is even comparable to the efficiency of a conventional drone. Um, it, the efficiency is terrible. <laughs> um, but I did learn a lot and I definitely want to explore the ground effect uh, thing a bit more. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other crazy drone projects, then click subscribe down below. Uh, I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me over on patreon.com. Uh, you guys make these projects possible. Uh, so thank you very much for your support. And I'll see you in the next project. Goodbye.